we haven't learned the whole mechanism here, but let's try as much of the mechanism as we've learned. Let's go through as much of the mechanism as we know. Are we forming stereo centers here? So at this point, we should definitely start putting in wedges and dashes. So let's put in wedges and dashes for this first intermediate here. In this picture here, we get a good place to put in the wedges and dashes. Good. What will happen next? The um, hydrogen peroxide is going to do something where it breaks up into a hydroxide and then replace the boron. That's right. It's even more complicated than that. But anyway, let's not worry about the mechanism. Let's just draw the product. We haven't really gone over that mechanism, so let's draw the product from that second step. Looks good. It might help here to keep circling kind of the things that have added in the final. Now, in this case, you drew both the hydrogen and the boron on a wedge, and here you drew both the hydrogen and the boron on a dash. So is that sin or anti? Sin. Sin. How did you know it would be sin? Because they're adding from the same side in the same direction. How do we know they're adding from the same side? Because they're attached to the same molecule. Yeah, and they're attacking at the same time. Since they're attacking concertedly from the same molecule, it makes sense they should both end up on the same side. I can do this, right? Where it's still on a wedge, but put it below. It doesn't matter, right? That's right. That's a good question. So what you're asking is... Like if I switch, if you switch the BH2 and the D, but kept them on their same wedges, right. then it would be the same. 
And of course, the D stands for deuterium here. So you're asking whether there's any difference between drawing a carbon like this and like this, with the deuterium, with the wedge pointing below or the dash pointing below. It's not. And the reason why there's no difference is that reality, in rea reality, remember, if you really looked at this, what you would see is this. In reality, all you would see is the deuterium, because in reality, the boron is directly behind the deuterium. In real reality, the deuterium would be blocking or eclipsing the boron, and you wouldn't even because, see it. Because they're like this in space, not right. this or this. Uh, let's see, I'm not quite sure if I see what you're doing with your hands, but yeah, that yeah. seems right. Okay, good. Yeah, I think you got the right idea. So where is the boron in reality? It's directly behind the deuterium. So it's simply a convention that we draw the boron either a little bit below the deuterium or a little bit above, just as a convention so that we can see both of them. So whether you draw it a little bit above or a little bit below has absolutely no significance because in reality, the boron is actually directly behind the deuterium. If you want to, you can draw it a little bit above. Or if you want to, you can draw it a little bit below. It doesn't matter which way you drew it because either way, it's really right behind the deuterium. That, and that's generally the, the, the case when you have a wedge and a dash pointing in the same direction. If you have a wedge and a dash pointing in the same direction, it doesn't matter whether you put the wedge above or below the dash on the blackboard, because either of those is a falsification of the true picture. The true picture is when the dash is actually directly behind the wedge and you couldn't see it anyway. So it's purely a matter of taste, whether you draw the wedge above or the, the dash above. So we're going to show the OH replacing the BH2. Now the important thing here is when the OH replaces the BH2, does it invert the configuration or retain the configuration? Retain. We just memorized that. We're not really going to explain it. But since the boron here was on a wedge, this oxygen ends up on a wedge. And here we're replacing the boron on a dash with an OH. And again, we're doing that with retention of configuration. Why? Because we simply memorize that there's retention of configuration in this step. And that would give us these as our final products. Was this Markovnikov or anti-Markovnikov? Um, Markovnikov. It looked the same. Like, in, that, in, the, in the top step, I didn't put the boron on the less substituted or more substituted, did I? Well, did you? So what does the, this capital D stand for? Deuterium. No, where does the oh, boron so want to? it's like an H. That's right, it's like an H. So then it's um, anti-Markovnikov. That's right. After all, why is it, let's forget about the word substituted. Where is there more room for the boron, on the top or on the bottom? Um, because the whether you count the deuterium as a substituent or not, even if you count this as a substituent, it's a small substituent. Even if you wanted to count this as a substituent, it's clearly a smaller substituent than a methyl group. So clearly the boron here wants to end up on the lower carbon here where there's less steric hindrance. But yes, yeah, since deuterium is just an isotope of hydrogen, it's not usually thought of as a substituent. Okay. So this is anti-Markovnikov. The OH is ending up on the less substituted carbon. Remember, the first step here was called hydroboration. And the second step is called oxidation. It makes sense that we would call this oxidation because we're forming a new bond to oxygen. Oxidation is when you form a new bond to oxygen. Well, that's what we're doing here. So overall, this is called hydroboration oxidation. Pretty scary name. Hydroboration oxidation. Why is it called hydroboration? Because in the first step we add the hydro and the boron, and then oxidation because then we replace the boron with a bond to oxygen. Maybe it would be more logical or helpful to call it hydroboration alcoholation, because we're really adding an alcohol. So this name, this name doesn't quite show you that what you're adding is an OH group over here. So this is this is the same as adding the alcohol, so the less substituted. That's exactly what it is. It is adding the alcohol. Ultimately, what we ended up doing was putting the alcohol on the less substituted carbon. What we ultimately ended up doing was we put the alcohol on the less substituted carbon. Antimarkovnikov. 
Remember, what if we had used sulfuric acid in water? Well, if we'd used sulfuric acid in water, just like you're saying, we would have gotten pretty much the same thing, except that the OH would have been on the more substituted carbon. Uh, we've already gone through the mechanism for why that is. So how do you know whether to use hydroboration oxidation or sulfuric acid in water? Well, it depends on whether you're uh, in a synthesis. Well, it depends on whether you're trying to put the OH on the more or the less substituted carbon. Normally, we would do both of these steps, but suppose you had a test question where they only did the first step. Well, if they only did the first step, then these would be the final products. If you wanted to, you could just stop here, but normally people want the alcohols, so they add the second step.